All right, all right. All right. <clears throat> hey, this is shoot first, questions later. And inform. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep going, man. We're started. In an, an informative and mildly interesting... Entertaining uh, photography uh, podcast with, with a raw, raw Aussie, Aussie flavour. Flavor. And I don't know if you noticed, well, but host. we, we kind of went for a, a really dry pun with the raw there, kind of grasping what we could. <laughs> it's in reference to, you know, shooting raw on your camera, yeah. which if you don't do, that's a, that's a hot tip for I all you... film. For all you... <laughs> <laughs> My name's Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> and to your right is Will. Yeah, Will. Hi, I'm We're going to apologise for the laughter. I think this is take <laughs> five. But anyway, we're rolling now. Yeah. Here we are. Let's just push through. Um, yeah, we've got a little bit to talk about uh, in the first segment uh, where we talk about what we've photographed in the last week as it is shoot first, questions later. Um, Will, what have we done? What have we done? Man, There's been just, some good weather this week. We've had a few just, little missions. Yeah, it feels like a huge week, and it's showing on my face. I'm aging mm. dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> I feel tired, but um, yeah, it's been good for big swells coming up the coast. Big swells, eh? <laughs> <laughs> so yes, hitting hitting the surf, shooting some waves, as I think we kind of did last week as well, from memory. Yeah. But uh, yeah, plenty of wave action going on, and actually, a storm. Storm we, action. We had some storm action. That was a few nights ago. That yeah, was fun. We um, saw it. Managed to drag you out of the house. Yeah, I, this has been a good week for me. I've been out of the house. You know, I would you say probably, at least three times. You've peaked. <laughs> this is it for the year. <laughs> yeah, at least three times with the camera. <laughs> That's no, so yeah. That. Highlight for me was uh, chasing that crazy storm that came through the other afternoon. Yeah, we, we started heading south as we got a, a bit of a hint of what was going on, and like halfway to the location, it just got insane. We just drove into the centre of this <laughs> of hell, <laughs> crazy. And I like I, I actually admitted to be a little bit nervous. <laughs> I was driving; it was pretty gusty. You had to pull and over and just yeah, let a cry. few tears roll. Yeah. <laughs> nah, um, I thought yeah, I was in Kansas so driving through the. Kansas? No, nah, I'm not going to go there actually. Okay. But uh, yeah, <laughs> there was a massive cloud like the, one of those shelf clouds rolling up mm. and then we kind of got to where we were heading and it was bucketing down rain we couldn't really see any hopes of a killer sunset with a rainbow was diminished and we're almost ready to call it quits mm. until the mm. rain yeah. ceased the lightning continued mm. and we we headed out to bombo quarry which is a location that i've shot many a times over the years but have always wanted to Photograph lightning there. It's just a tricky one, given the the locate the how to get to the location and the little walk down to the rocks itself. But we we went for it, man. And yeah, and there was n- there was like no light. It was nighttime. Like the sun had set. <laughs> it's funny there how was, the nighttime does it. <laughs> there was like a little bit of light, you know, in that sort of blue hour yeah, the phase. Moon, but yeah, the moon the, rise yeah, the moon behind came the cloud up. surprisingly still emitted some light, but. Yeah, it was it was it was really dark. There was lots of lightning happening like out to sea, so it was lighting up the sky in our shots. We tried mm. to get some bolts, but yeah, like it was pretty fun. I still haven't processed the photos properly, but we were both sort of doing a technique where we we had to take multiple shots for exposure blending and also different shutter speeds to get different water movement. Yeah, a tricky shot like if you can just imagine shooting a seascape, these are big basalt columns these big dark rocks so at night time you can imagine how dark they come up so yeah doing 30 second exposures for the sky and then doing several minutes exposures for the for the rocks and the foreground yeah. and the water and yeah just mixing it up just trying to get the the cleanest possible result in the mm. photo but uh yeah you haven't processed yours but some i don't know how but somehow i managed to get a little bit of time to process my shots and they're, they're marinating at the moment just stewing the flavors up what are your thoughts I, at the moment yeah really you like it yeah stoked definitely but yeah the storm was definitely not overhead it was quite far out to sea which i thought was going to be not that cool but yeah looking at the shot I, th- I think i'm pretty happy with it definitely keen for another round of storm chasing down there but 
Yeah, it was good. Yeah. Exciting. And that was pretty fun. And then, yeah, like this morning, or the last two mornings, we went out, took some photos of waves. Yeah, photographed the swell. and Yeah, caught up with some photographer friends out yeah, there. Yeah, we caught up with Warren, who was a guest last week, and a few other talented photographers mm. around the town. So, well, productive week. Yeah. Do, do, you have, um, do you have anything going on in the coming week? Like, do you have anything upcoming for photography-wise? Uh, yeah, next week I'm off to the Blue Mountains, actually. I haven't told oh, you this. You'd probably be a bit... Yeah. No, you'd be a bit gutted because, yeah, yeah we go going canyoning. You know that canyoning? Oh, that what you, are you, you doing? Where, so I'm doing it without you. Oh. <laughs> No, so it's a job. It's a tourism job for the New South Wales tourism, yeah, and I'm kind of hosting a bunch of other photographers. Are you going to that spot we were talking about? Yes. Oh, are you? Actually? <laughs> and I, that's pure coincidence. Oh. I just dropped the idea in their brain. I was like, "Hey, we should do this," and then they, yeah, they got onto it. So it's all organised. That's the sound of my heart breaking. <laughs> yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, so that'll be I think Damn. two nights next week. So I've got to host some uh, some photographers. Instagram photographers, influencers, as they call them. A few people, a few friends, kind of, from around the country. Cool. So, yeah, it should be fun. What about yourself? Um, I'm going to... Well, West- then, that's a wrap on that. Yeah. We'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, going to Western Australia for um, five days to catch up with um, family and... Yeah, back to WA where you spent a, a yeah. bit of a stint, twelve Li- month stint last yeah. year. Lived yeah. there last year. Yeah, um, and where where we're going, it's really country uh, WA, but it's in the middle of a really nice forest. It's called uh, Dwelling Up. So lots of sort of um, I'm kind of gearing up for you know forest photos, I suppose, cool. and I'm hoping it gets a bit rainy, a bit autumny oh, vibes. Yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 Uh, I don't know. Um, and you, you picked up a telephoto. Yeah, I just got a new lens the other day. Um, for the Fuji, 100 to 400. 100 to 400, which, I, yeah, it's It's so funny getting used to such a long lens. Like, I've never never had a lens this long before. And, yeah, it, like, sometimes I feel a bit claustrophobic at times. But <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> no, especially it's, shooting it's really the cool. ocean. Actually, I was photographing my friend skateboarding this afternoon, Sam, and... I was zoomed in really tight, just mucking around with a shot, and I was quite close to him on the ground, and I freaked out because as he bailed and <laughs> flicked the board towards me, I was looking through the lens at like a 50 mil perspective, and I had to quickly jerk my head back because I thought I was about to get whacked by this board, but obviously it was a few meters away, but yeah, it really does, you can, yeah. I know that claustrophobic yeah. feeling you're talking about as well. But then like, I don't know. It's called weakness, <laughs> and you need to rid it from your life. <laughs> when I'm When I'm using it, I just feel like... When I'm looking through the viewfinder and stuff, I feel like the photos are like small or something. But then when you look at them properly on a computer, it's like, yeah, it's cool. So you're looking at me now as you say this, and you can tell I'm not understanding. <laughs> I'm just I looking know, at you like yeah. it's small. What does he mean? Yeah, sorry. Um, so, yeah, what did you explain just, it? Well, it's cool. Like when you look at the photo later on the computer, and the whole frame is filled with like something that was a tiny detail when you were looking at it with your eyes, if that makes sense. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So, like, yeah. when you're out there looking at it with your eyes, you think you're photographing such a tiny thing. Oh, of course. And, and then, then yeah. But when you put it on the computer and see, like, a proper full photo of it, it's just like, oh, cool. Like, this is actually a really big photo of a small thing. Yeah, yeah. And there's no distractions then because it's just zoomed right in on exactly what yeah. you're looking at. Yeah. These these are the thoughts that I think yeah. that keep me up <laughs> <Yeah>. at night. <laughs> Clearly sleep deprived. Yeah, yeah. No, nah, legitim- legitimately though, sleep deprivation is all real. throughout this um, podcast, guys. So this is going to be. We've a fun lost one. our daylight savings here, and now sunrise is about just say six a.m. roughly. So yeah. we're waking up just before five. Well, I'm waking up just before five. Yeah, same. A little bit door. earlier. Yeah, and then yeah, like. Whatever. Let's just keep going. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, there's Let's no complaints. <laughs> I actually prefer it, to be honest. There's less yeah, people around. So. It is cool, but like halfway through the day, I'm just hitting a wall and I just want to go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's probably why Will and I are a bit wild tonight. <coughs> yeah. Struggle um, is real. So, we're going to go on to the next part, which is answering a question uh, from a listener. So as you said that, I was like, the next part. 
shoot first, questions later. Lady. The question. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you see. We're up to the question. Really it makes sense, I'm that glad. name. <laughs> Who came up with it? I'm glad you understand <laughs> now after a few episodes of hosting. I in, get it now. You finally understood. Um, question time, where we like to answer a question that you guys have submitted either through the email or various other means. And you can even put one in the letter, I guess. You know, just yeah. post it in the mail. <laughs> you don't have our address, that? but... Yeah, you don't have it, but, but that would be very impressive. Read it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to read it? No, you can, actually. All right. <laughs> this email Thank is you. from Cal Harmer. He's actually actually a friend of mine. But he asks, um, he asks, Hi, guys. Do you do hustle? I wish that someone would explain what the hustle is. It's a term I hear heaps in photography, but... I feel it isn't often well explained. How exactly does one do the hustle? Enjoying the podcasts, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and, yeah, so thanks, Cal. And this is what I uh, think he's essentially asking is how do you sort of drum up work in the industry? Like, how, yeah, yeah. how do you chase... Yeah, yeah, I think that's the gist of what he's saying. Yeah, how do you chase getting Urban work Dictionary, and- <laughs> yeah. So, Urban Dictionary says hustle is anything you need to do to make money, be it <laughs> selling cars, drugs, mm-hmm. your your body. Okay. If you making money, you you hustling. Ah, well. So yeah, that's right. So it's about getting essentially work in this thing we call photography. In that industry, the industry, the hustle. Oh, I think you should kick this off because you're coming from a better <laughs> first place. hand hustle yeah. experience. <laughs> yeah. The hustle comes into it because that's kind of acknowledging that it's something that's not easy. Mm. It's I think we brushed on this a few episodes ago briefly, but making money out of photography this day and age, it's a totally different ball game to what it may have been, say, a year ago or two years ago, and especially five, ten years ago. It's nowhere near like it used to be, and we're living in times where there's basically no rules and anything goes, and people are making money or, you know, just a bit of pocket money or even full-time careers out of their photography these days purely through means that didn't exist a few years ago. Obviously, probably first thing that comes to mind is just social media initially. It's the new media, folks. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. The look on your face then was like, I'm done. That's your one-liner, you're done. (laughs) Yeah, so... Uh, a, a question that is pretty common, people asking about, you know, how, especially breaking through. Sometimes people are like, what was your breakthrough moment? Which for me, there definitely w- was not a breakthrough moment. So I guess hu- as far as hustling goes, it's about getting your name out there and reaching the contacts or people that you want to essentially work for, whether that be actual, uh, like a uh, everyday Mary and Joe if you're a wedding photographer or if you're shooting commercially you need to be getting into the to the ears of the people that you know are the agents or the managers of buildings or whatever that you want to be shooting whatever it is for me it's landscape photographies and tourism guys and workshops so there's all these other different people that I you know I personally like to need to be in contact with so it's about okay how do I contact these dudes essentially so you could say the first step is sort of do a bit of research find out exactly what your market like the area you want to go into yeah. is you got to narrow it down yeah, first of all and gather maybe gather some contacts or gather some you know emails whatever email addresses to um to sort of uh, I guess focus but, but yeah. how? Like you know, it's so easy to say gather well, emails. Like say you will go on to well, like it's like called say, stalking people, Cal, <laughs> and you need to get good at it. <laughs> <laughs> but like say you've got a pretty good idea of what industry it is. You go to the website. Yeah. You go to their um, contact us, exactly. or you go to their like directory yeah. in like find out whoever's in charge of like photography or creative directing and just cold yeah, email. Yeah, exactly, man. Um, it's uh, it's kind of just going, yeah, where Cam said, where you think you would probably go. Places like LinkedIn, that's a good professional network where people um, people are connecting purely for the basis of uh, working together. 
So LinkedIn, going to the actual websites of companies or brands you want to work with, contacting them directly. And even, honestly, through Instagram can work or just other social media platforms. It's not the most professional way to do it. However, I've been contacted there a lot of times and I've also contacted companies there um, and had success doing it that way. So, yeah, definitely narrowing down your target audience and then just kind of reaching out through as many means as possible. But the key the key thing is don't be a pest. You yeah. don't want to be that guy that's just hassling people all the time and constantly chasing people up if you're if you're not bringing much to the party, if that kind of makes sense. Yeah, I, like, I could be wrong in saying this, but if you're contacting people on Instagram or like... Um, you know, people you want to work with or whatever, don't try to, like, brag about your follower mm. count or, yeah. like, try to use that to your advantage. Like, and like, hey, man, I've got, like, <laughs> 70,000 followers. Like, what, um, there's what can a you proper way to do that. Yeah, yeah there's, like, a, there's, there's yeah, like a proper... Yeah, you've got to remain you know, professional. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And what I always kind of think is don't necessarily approach them with the the mentality of what you can get out of them. You've got to approach them with the idea that, hey, this is me, this is what I can give you. So Yeah, that's really good. That applies to so so much good stuff. Like if you want to get, if you want to work with a magazine or something or get your photos published in a magazine, yeah, that this magazine needs to like, they need to what get something bring to from the table? you that yeah. your photos need to make this magazine's better. You can't. You don't want to go there thinking, oh, I want the personal joy of seeing my photos in mm. a magazine sort of thing, even though that's like a product of that happening. Yeah, and also knowing that you're not the only one that's going to be contacted. Yeah. You know, you yeah. if you message someone on Instagram, if you DM them, you can pretty much guarantee that there's probably 20 other people doing it that exact day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, I guess in a nutshell, that that's hustling. And it's a continuous thing, really. Mm. It's fortunate when companies come to you and you have return clients and things like that, and that's where the hustle perhaps stops being hustle to a degree yeah. <laughs> and becomes more just a non-hustling job. Mm. But, uh, but, yeah, initially it's just reaching out, and that's why you probably heard this term. Some people say, I'm always hustling. You know, photography, it's a creative thing, and if you're in a niche genre, then chances are you're going to be hustling all the time because mm. you're just always looking for work. And it doesn't mean like you're starving and you need to find work, but it just means you just have to have the ra- your radar on and you're always looking. Yeah, that's really good. Have, having your radar on, I feel like that's a really good way to just yeah. sum up what, yeah. Um, and i got to admit, man, uh, Cal, the best thing you can do, in my opinion, is when you can have face-to-face contact with potential clients. Yeah. This is something that I try to do as much as I can. I'll just go up to the city and just have a coffee with people. And a lot of the time, it's just catching up. But there's a lot of value in that than just knowing people through emails Mm. and that's all. I know it's not always possible depending on location. But I think, yeah, when you can form face-to-face relationships with these people, then there's a good chance that you'll come to mind for the next job as opposed to the person they've never met before. Good advice, Will. You will leave it there, eh? <laughs> <laughs> nah, thanks, Cal. So yeah, uh, Cal's Instagram is. Why don't we give everyone his MySpace page or something? Oh, yeah, something he does. relevant, dude. He runs dude. a very productive <laughs> MySpace. Page. Does he really? Coincidentally? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares um, about Instagram? MySpace is where it's at. Check out at Cal Harmer, C A L H A R M E R on Instagram if you want to see his one shots. word. Yeah, one cool. word. Uh, so yeah, thanks for sending that in, Cal. And if you want to send your own questions in, you can email shoot first podcast at gmail dot com. And now we're going to go on to our next little topic of conversation, which is you were meant to have the guitar in quick. It's not too late. Nah, you ruined it. Yeah. <laughs> our next segment segment uh, make him and break him. Yeah. So which is where we discuss a. A rule of photography, and we kind of <laughs> yeah. We, you got this look on your face, sorry, like, dude. I just realized, no, no. Nah, nah, I just realized I'm scrolling Instagram. <laughs> what the? <hell? laughs> 
<laughs> this Why? is the problem, man. This I know. I just like I went to media. find Cal's it's thing, killing you. and then it's I just killing kept all of us. going. Anyway. Yeah, so make them and break them. We discuss a rule of photography, how it works, how to apply it, and then how to break it and not adhere to it whatsoever. Yeah, and we picked a little topic this week that, I've, for me personally, I believe sticking to this rule maybe like 80% of the time and then breaking it like 20% of the time. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah, are we doing using batteries in the camera? <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah, because <laughs> you broke that this afternoon, Boom! didn't you? <laughs> I did, actually. Yeah, I've got to say, actually, on that note, if you buy generic no-name batteries, which I do, admittedly, because they're one-fifth of the price of the, the genuine ones, but a lot of the time they'll give a false reading. So don't, <laughs> if you think the battery is getting towards empty, then it's as good as empty. Anyway, let's yeah. continue on Just to carry, the rule. Just carry a little spare in your pocket. Yes. So um, the rule, you're yeah. saying you, you'd adhere to it. Most of the time, but there's yeah. a small time where you shouldn't. Yes, I agree. So, our rule is uh, shooting with your gut instinct. And <laughs> <laughs> I feel like, yeah, is that a good way to say shooting it? Shooting with your gut instinct. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, just like... Um, trusting your instinct. Shoot, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's probably the best way to shoot it. Yeah, trusting <laughs> your instinct. So... More or less, which... Your instinct is like, when you take photos and you go with your instinct, that's that's what you are, like, that's how your photos um, become your own. Yeah, like, if you get your a bit own of a style, yeah, if you distinct just, just style. stay true to you and yeah. you shoot with, like, yeah, just go with your gut, then... You're I probably going to go down a certain direction most of the time and, yeah, yeah. get that look. Yeah, and I feel like that's what makes um, everyone's photos unique in a way. Um, if you... Yeah, find find the way to inject yourself into your photos, and you yeah, and just trust yeah. that voice within that's saying yeah, that's that's the shot or do yep. it do it this way. Yep, definitely. So, so the benefit is, well, you get a style basically. You get yeah. a style, and you're not going to kick yourself later yeah. if you. <laughs> what, what do you think might be an example of you going with your gut instinct? So, like when we went out in the storm, and we um. We, like, set up to get the lightning at the end of the night. We, like, set up our tripods. What what, what made you um, stick on the 16 mil and, like, go horizontal and um, know you had to focus five times to get a sharp photo and stuff? Like, apart from knowledge-wise, like, what what do you think about your style, your mm. gut instinct yeah, that was told your you to do, it, that, do like, that? Yeah. yeah, as you said, that was in the dark. We're, we're in a storm. There's no time to think. You're yeah. purely going off instinct. We were kind really. of on the clock a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah, in that scenario, trusting my instinct, which for me, I've developed over the years, just purely as you do with this type of thing, just naturally shooting a landscape. Yeah, just going. It was kind of just a shot. I was like, I just want to get a classic landscape, seascape shot here, which genuine, gen, bleh, not genuinely, what am I looking for here? Generally? You, generally involves incorporating a, a strong foreground element, kind of leading the eye, pushing the eye through the scene. I had water in the mid-ground that drew through the centre and out to the horizon, and then I had the lightning bang right in the middle of the photo on the horizon. So, yeah, I just kind of went with what I would actually call a, a very typical landscape composition, but I went for it because... Like I said, I wanted to get lightning here and I felt like I wanted to just do it properly and not kind of take any risks. Mm. I didn't want to get too weird with the compo and then regret. And yeah, I'm 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 glad I listened to the the instinct there. Yeah. However, but uh, before you, we even set up the tripods, the the actual picking the part of the yeah. boat we were going to walk to and set up on as well. I think that as your instinct like came into and that that's as because, well. Just yeah. yeah, knowing the location and like literally photographing that exact same yeah. composition for a sunrise like two weeks earlier. Yeah, I suppose if we were to break it down, we well you knew that the sky was going to have a lot of interest for the yeah. shot because there was going to be lightning. We you'd want so to look at as the much open yeah, sky yeah. as possible and yeah. things like that. Yeah, so that works well when well a lot of the time, obviously, but I feel like. The whole point of the, breaking this rule now, let's get into that. When I looked back at my photo, I was definitely, like, as I mentioned earlier, I'm happy with it. But I 
there was a few things I kind of didn't overlook, but I if I kind of took a step back and said, okay, yeah, I can do it that way, which is the stock standard, you know, it works, it's good. But if I maybe just took another couple of minutes to think outside the box, maybe I could have came up with something outside, just next level basically. But there's that risk involved because, you know, I might have got home and went, nah, I really should have just stuck to my guns here or whatever. Yeah. However, there's that payoff, I think. And that's the whole point of breaking this rule is it can it can lead you to further possibilities that you might be switching yourself off to unknowingly. For example, the wa- a wave that we've been shooting the past couple of days, that wave, this particular break, the wave just breaks over perfectly. It curls over and it's got a nice jade emerald color inside of it when it's backlit. And every time it does it, you just want to photograph it because it looks so beautiful and powerful. Yeah. However, it's just been done a million times and it doesn't matter how many times you shoot that specific like curl when you zoom right in on it. It looks very similar. So for me, the last couple of days there, I've just been trying to totally not do that and just shoot some semi-abstract stuff. But always, whenever that wave would break, my instinct would be like, oh, I should just shoot that. I should go back and do it the normal yeah. way it's weird but however if i did do that then i'm, I'm just going to get something i've done before and miss out on potentially creating something that is going to be way better than sticking to that stock standard way of thinking yeah so one thing we were talking about earlier uh off the mic was when we were at this wave we would be almost like fighting ourselves like yeah, the it, your brain's like your nah. brain is just automatically like telling you to compose it this way and i think some a part of that is because it's just natural good composition and we've learned like what a nice composition is and so we'd go to do that but also i think a little bit of like influence of seeing all those photos like the photos we like from there just kind of leech into the back of our heads and so <coughs> that's kind of yeah. stuck there and and the payoff, yeah, like you said, is is if you just try a little bit harder, break the mold, and you yeah, you might be um, getting you know a shot that you haven't seen before and that yeah. you like most of all, and and it also I, I think can be boiled down to like if you're not talking about waves or landscapes or whatever, can be uh, when when you go to take photos of something new, like if you're presented with maybe a new situation that you're not as comfortable with, your first instinct might be to do what you've seen other people do. Yeah. And um there's like and a subliminal just search the composition, yeah. like that main composition that you know will sort of work. Um, which is the safe option, like you said. But then yeah, just every now and then that, you know, twenty percent of the time could be good to like challenge and it is a challenge just it's challenging and generally the reason why that the standard way works is because it's i guess a bit easier and it's a proven it's yeah. a proven method so yeah. it's like a fail safe and i guess taking that not trusting the instinct and going outside your comfort zone it's a slight gamble however the payoff can be much greater in my opinion uh, an example of this is a few years ago, back to lightning actually, at Cathedral Rocks, another seascape location here. I had a an, a, vis- a shot in mind, which we spoke about, Cam and I. Um, he asked me what my bucket list photo would be, like before I die. And out of everything in the world, I said to him, I really want to get a lightning shot at Cathedral Rocks, like a really good solid one. Hadn't I've never seen it before. And I just think it'll be a really big challenge, but I truly believe I'll get it one day. It might take me my whole life, but I'll get it. And then uh, literally like within 12 months... Still hadn't got it. Still hadn't got it, <laughs> and I'm still waiting. <laughs> I um, Yeah, so long story short, end up getting this photo like within 12 months. It was ridiculous. But when I shot this angle, it would have been, especially with lightning, it's very easy to just throw a wide angle lens on. And this goes for the, the Northern Lights as well, even the Milky Way. When you're trying to capture something impressive in the sky, you can with landscapes it's so easy to throw the wide angle on and just kind of use the sky to win the shot over. So with lightning you just kind of get a subpar composition, but if you get some good 
lightning in there, then that's going to win the shot. But I wanted to really make sure the composition was the king here. And if I got some lightning in the same frame, then that would be a bonus. So I actually shot this scene at 50 millimeters, which for a landscape is really kind of outside the box generally. Um, and yeah, I took this risk. I only had a small percentage of sky in the composition I went for. So more or less... You're less likely to get lightning. Completely, yeah. Like minimize my chances dramatically. And I got it. I eventually got it. And that shot now, it's got this look to it that just doesn't look like a, a typical lightning shot for a seascape photo. Mm. And yeah, put it all on the line just to get that, that small little frame in the, you know, getting the lightning in that shot. But I think it really paid off. And I'm so much happier I'd done that than just going wide and, you know, picking it up very easy. But it wouldn't have had the same effect. The effect wasn't there. Yeah, and I know, knowing you, you would have been, like, thinking the whole time you had the 50 mil focal length. You were probably using a zoom, yeah? or Just a prime. Oh, prime really? 50, yeah. Oh. Put it all on the line. And, yeah, so you the whole the, time I bet you were like, oh, I really should Like you said, back. fighting it, yeah. yeah. I was literally like, oh, is this silly? But I did... You know how we talk about it being gut instinct? My gut instinct was like, go wide. But then it was like there's this other instinct that says, nut, mm. you've made the right decision here. Although yeah. it's going against. So it's like a confirmation yeah. of stepping outside the box. Yeah. Next level. That was like Matrix stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Inception. And I just want to touch on very quickly. I know probably rambling on too long here. But we mentioned about kind of if you view other people's photos of a location, then that can become your instinct to shoot it the same way. And that's, yeah. I actually, I try to avoid overlooking at photos of a location I'm about to travel to because that will just give you that tunnel vision and you'll get to this location and subconsciously start to shoot it the exact same way everyone else has because you've been predisposed to all their compositions. So, if you know you're going somewhere and you haven't seen too much on the spot, but you know you want to go there and check it out, then just leave it at that. Yeah. Because, honestly, the best photos will, for me personally, come when I have no preconceived ideas and I'm just left to react to what I'm experiencing, what my eyes are seeing, and purely just go off that. Purely go off the, I guess, emotion, essentially, and just let my... I was going to say instinct then, but it's kind of is, like... Just just let that guide you more like the the inspiration of what you're seeing in front of you instead of going, oh, okay, well, I know A, B, C, D shot it like that and it looked good. Now I want to get that one for me. There's nothing wrong with doing that. But, yeah. you know, if you're the person that has the 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 bravery to... <laughs> to sort of fight yourself. Like, fight yeah, it and go, just... look, I know that works, but, hey, look, I think I'm going to try this other way. And yeah. if this does work, then I'll be much happier. Yeah, so in what? summary, <laughs> yeah, just kind of don't try to summarize what we went on. No, nah, just challenge yourself. Like, if maybe some, maybe you'll get that little bit of an urge to just like to mess up your compo or just do something crazy. I reckon just, just do, do, it. do it. Yeah, <laughs> because let's face it, how refreshing does it look when you're say looking online and you just see something different? You're like, what yeah. is that? That location? I yeah, can't believe yeah. they've done that. It's so I refreshing. love seeing that. Hey, yeah. yeah. Instead of just seeing the same old angle of the, the same old subject, which... And sometimes I'll say, get that shot. Just go there, yeah. get it, and then rest. You've got that. It's in the bag. Now you're now, free to yeah. explore. So true. But yeah, um, we're going to start wrapping up now, I think. Yeah, I think we rambled on. I feel like I probably lost people on that, but so, yeah. I, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> um just like sincerely thank you so much to all the people like we've just been blown away by yeah. some of the like seriously nice things yeah some really said. humbling uh, yeah. emails coming in and yeah just it's really refreshing to know that you guys are listening and people from all walks of photography and some even not photographers yeah. necessarily so it's good it makes this worthwhile you know we're, we're sitting outside at the moment it's freezing cold it's 1 a.m this is we put it's a lot of effort to do this podcast so no <laughs> no it's a real pleasure so thank you everyone who's subscribed who's emailed in who's left a review yeah a couple of cool reviews there as well so thanks heaps for that guys and if you want to send in a question the email is shoot first podcast at, at gmail.com and if you want to contact Will or I, though, you can catch you us can on You can go Instagram. away. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> What's your IG, Wilbur? Instagram, 
Wil- Wilhelm <laughs> underscore Patino. <laughs> Wilhelm Wilbur. <laughs> and I am A underscore Mugs underscore Game. And that's that. Hey, this is shit. First <laughs> questions later. <laughs> All right, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, guys. <laughs> I just like Cam's enthusiasm so on the tired. intro. If you're going to roll on to the epi- next episode after this one, just listen to when he says, hey. Uh, but now by <laughs> the end of it, listen to him. He's, so, hey. he's out of it. Hey, this is Shimmer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next episode. Bye.